Hi, this is Lady Lex UK, and this is a Dreams Gadget tutorial. Today, we're doing logic and processing, and we've got to the counter. This is probably going to be one of the most common gadgets uh, that you're going to see about. Well, it is when I'm programming anyway, because I love this gadget. Uh, I use it for a lot of things. I use this um, to act as a um, an indicator if something is active or turned on. I use it um, to uh, activate animations. Um, uh, I use it to indicate whether somebody has got a key or whether a door is open or um, basically a, a, a count of lives and all sorts of things. Um, this, this is an incredibly versatile gadget and um, it's pretty simple as well so you're going to be using this a lot so you've got to get familiar with this uh, right our counter as you can see from uh, it has quite a few inputs and outputs actually on the gadget already um, the ones that you're going to be using the most are the increase count the decrease count the reset and the counter full uh, there is a count progress here but i don't think you're going to be using that very much and i'll show you why in a minute okay let's open the tweak menu and have a look at it so here we have um uh, a counter uh, the default is a one zero counter so this is a boolean um, what this does is um it creates um a uh either a one or a zero value for this counter so either it's off or it's on it's true or it's false um, so it starts off with a count of zero. You would send a pulse to the counter and that would change that current count to one. And as you can see, this is all lit up now um, and the counter is now full. When the counter is full, it sends out a signal. And that's what you can use uh, <clears throat> to, to uh, indicate that something is uh, ready and on or active or whatever you're using your counter for. Um, you can move the target values, so um, you can limit to how many pulses um, it needs to receive before uh, the counter is full. So let's have a look at it in action. I'll use the one zero counter here. Let me do a very simple exercise to show it off. So we'll put a light into our scene. This is a nice, easy way of showing something turning on and off right and we're going to put a controller sensor in let me just get rid of those and i make that remote controllable right now let's say we wanted to turn this light on so we're going to wire the triangle button to the power on that light so let's turn that on. Let's just turn let's turn that. So that counter's not doing anything at the moment, so don't worry about that. Mm. Right. So we've turned that on. If I press triangle, you'll notice the light comes on when I press triangle. If I hold triangle down, the power is always on. But otherwise, it's just going to turn on when that triangle is held. So now what if you wanted this triangle to actually turn the light on? Like a switch. Turn on. That's what you wanted. So let's turn that off. Right, instead of wiring it to um, the, the light directly, let's delete that wire. So this time we're going to wire our triangle to the increase count on our counter. And that is a one zero counter. So this pulse that's going to be sent when I press the triangle is going to go into this counter and it's going to make that counter full so we're going to link the counter full to the power on the light now what happens when i press the triangle is it turns the light on and this is a permanent thing because this signal um this is the signal this counter is always full so it's always sending the signal so it's always turning on the light so this is a way of turning what is normally a pulse into a permanent signal so you get the triangle into the counter and then the counter fall into our light. Now let's say um, 
we wanted to be able to turn that light off. Well, this is uh, the counter if you wanted a, a switch to press triangle on to press triangle off. Uh, you wouldn't use a counter for that. You'd use a selector. So let me just show you that, which is, um, I know it's not uh, about the counter, but I, I'll, sh I'll show you the difference between the two. So here is a, the counter version. That's a permanent turning on and off. Let's delete those wires. Uh, so now we've got a selector. So we're going to say output B is our light. And then we're going to have triangle move to next output. So now when we press the triangle, it turns it on, it turns it off. So that's that's how you would do an on off switch. So the counter is good for turning things permanently on, the selector will turn things on and off. So we'll just get rid of the selector now. Now I'm going to show you a timed situation. So this is what the counter again is good for. So let's put a timer in. And we'll wire our triangle back up to our counter. Uh, what we're going to do is we've got a, a timer that's set to five seconds. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the counter into start timer. And when the timer is finished, it's going to reset the count. So we're going to put that counter full back to the light. So um, so we're going to press triangle, it's going to turn on that counter, it's going to turn on the light, it's also going to turn on this timer. When this timer gets to the end, it's going to reset the counter, which will turn off the light. So let's try that. Let's rewind it and try that. There we go. So triangle on, the counter's running, and now the light is off. And I can press triangle again. Now you've got to imagine... Um, that this is a way of uh, turning on animations. Now, uh, a lot of people make an animation and they wire it directly into your triangle button or whatever, and, and you want a punch to happen, let's say. You press triangle and it only does the first frame of your animation, which is not what you want at all. Um, so this is a way of getting your animation to, to run all the way through. So we've got Control the sensor, triangle goes into the counter, the counter turns on. Here is our animation, imagine that's a, a timeline instead of a timer. Um, that's going to run through the animation and then when it's finished it's going to reset the timer and you can do that animation again, you press the triangle button. So this is a punch. That's an animation, that's an animation. There we go. So that's how you do it. Um, I've got another tutorial um, that's coming after this, which will be for uh, the gates. And I've uh, used as an example um, some animations uh, using counters and, and gates. So um, you can see that in action in the next tutorial. So I won't go into that in any, any great detail. So what else is this counter good for and what else has it got? Right, let's have a look. So if we look at the, the tweak menu, uh, first of all, you've got the target value. So you can have a different um, target value. This is set to default to just be a Boolean, but you could, um, let's, uh, let's see, what should we have? So we'll have 10. Right, we'll put in a counter of 10. So now, let's reset it. So now, it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 presses, and then the light turns on. So you can see how you could possibly use this to create things like quick time events and um, button presses where you've got to uh, press uh, the button really fast before it resets. So right, it's been pointed out that I made a mistake in my tutorial. So here is the correction. So to do a quick time event, so we've got our counter set for 10. 
and um, that turns on the light so let's try that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten turns on the light now we want to have it so that there is a quick time event so you have a limited amount of time to do those 10 presses so we're going to add uh, a timer and what's going to happen now is when I press the triangle button for the first time it's going to set this timer off I'm going to set this timer for two seconds when the timer is finished it's going to reset my counter now because this is going to reset the counter at two seconds whether or not it's full or not I'm going to need another counter to act as my switch. We want a one zero counter in and on. Right so what's going to happen now is the timer is going to start as soon as I press the triangle button. This is also going to feed into our counter but it's going to reset if I don't do 10 before um, the timer is up. So let's press so one two three four five six it reset. One two three four five six it reset one two three four five six seven eight nine ten it turned on the light there you go so that's how you do a quick time event style push using a counter and a timer here's a counter full so this is this is what sends the signal once you've reached the uh, the current count matches the target value this is count progress now do not get this confused with count current count um, I am surprised actually that the counter itself, if we look at the counter's gadget, um, it has chosen to have count progress here instead of current count. Do not get them confused because they do not provide the same number. This provides you with, um, okay, so this, this count progress is a percentage of the count. So um, it says in the description, let me just hover over it for a bit, there we go, outputs the progress of the count, i.e. if the count, target count is 10 and the current count is 5, this would be 50%. Now, it doesn't actually give you uh, the number 50. Um, that's a little misleading. Uh, what it does actually is send you uh, a digital percentage between 0 and 1. Uh, so it's a representation of a digital number. Let's pop that in. So uh, watch this this count here. So as I press my triangle, oh, what's it doing? It's not doing anything. Why is it not doing? Hang on, reset it. There we go. Right. Oh. Oh, I know why. <laughs> there we go. Now there, there we go. That's that's an that's an example. Um, it's you need it to um, show show you the decimal point otherwise you don't see the um the, the count going up okay so here we go one so that's at 0 0.1 is 10 percent 0.2 is 20 percent etc as it goes up like that there we are and you would have noticed that once it got to six it shows as a one if you don't show the the decimal places so there we go there's the percentage so somewhere between zero and one and um, that's what that is giving you, which is not probably what you want. Um, probably you're more interested in the current count. How many is the counter up to? Um, so you can use this as a, a, a counter. So, uh, so um, you can count down, you can count up. So let's say that a player has to collect 10 objects. Um, you could set this counter so it starts at 10 and you show the current count um this is not going to do it because um i've got it all wired up to things but um uh, you show the current count like so there we go you show the current count uh, as a display and then every time they pick something up you decrease the count so it goes from 10 down to zero so um it's useful for making scores so um the only problem with the counter in terms of making it a, a score thing is that um, the, 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 you have to put in a target value that's large enough so that the player uh, can increase the score um, and uh, not run out of, of uh, counter. So bear that in mind. Um, so there are other ways 
of uh, working out scores that don't involve counters. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but this is a simple way of doing it. If it's a countdown, it's even better. If it's a countdown, then this uh, this works really well. So instead of increasing the count, you would decrease the count every time you pick an object up and down it would go. Um, the problem with that, of course, is um, the counter doesn't reverse. You can't say, um, this only tells you if the counter is full. It doesn't tell you if the counter is um, uh, empty. There is no counter is empty option here. So even if you reverse it and make it so that it decreases, um, you would have to put a calculator in that says, so when the uh, current count equals zero, then um, send signal. That's how you would uh, deal with it. So there we go. Uh, so increase count, decrease count. I've already uh, touched on these. This is where you send your pulse. And you wire that into either one of these. Now this is the reset count. This will reset it back to zero. Um, so you can start again. So even if you've got your counter set at the beginning to uh, its, its top value, the reset will put it back to zero. That's what it does. So there we go, there is the counter. Um, it's a very simple uh, gadget, but it's very, very versatile and very useful. And it will be used over and over and over again because it's uh, so versatile and so necessary for making microchips and logic. So I hope that was useful for you. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in your dreams.